Hey now, cats, we're back again this week, and if you know Balls, you know he is an Electric Six fan like a motherfucker, so you know who this guy is? He's been on my show before. You know him. I love him. The great Dick Valentine. It's love. It's got to be love. Absolutely. They have a new album out. I can't stop listening to it because it's amazing. It's been a while, but it was so worth the wait. The album's called Turquoise, and I actually wanted to talk to Dick here about some of the songs in the album. I actually want to do kind of a track-for-track track breakdown because when I listen to this album, I picture something, as most listeners do, but I wanted to ask you what you were thinking about each track and see if it matches up with what I got. So All right, Let's go and see what we got. Okay, first song, Take Me to the Sugar. I think it's about, like, lovers and pussy juice and all that great stuff. Like, am I close? Uh, it's It really is just about playing the Hollywood L.A. game. Uh, it's about somebody's really, really desperate to make it in, in L.A. and Hollywood. And it's just, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have all the eyes on me if I could. Take me to the sugar. I promise to be good. And it's just uh, desperation to make it big. That's what it, uh, it's, it's, an, it's an L.A. anthem. So I was way off. I, but I, I like your take on it. It's open to interpretation. <laughs> Number two, Dr. K. When I look at this song, I first had thought might have been about, like, Dr. Kevorkian or somebody like that. But when I listen to it further, it doesn't sound like that. I'm a little puzzled on this one. What was the inspiration for Dr. K? This was this is a fun one. So we used to do um, like Kickstarter campaigns, you know, like with crowdfunding, and you, know, you do rewards for those. So one of the packages was Dick Valentine writes you a song, you know, and some guy, Dr. Christian Kowalski, I think he's in Germany. Uh, the only the only guidance he gave me was write a song for me. They, my friends call me Dr. K. I don't give a fuck about money and I love to party. And so that's all <laughs> that's I That's right in the chorus. That's, that's it. The... So I was just like, that's all I had to go on. So I was like, Dr. K, you know, don't give a fuck about money. Um, and and it's, it was supposed to be just for him. And then when we came to do the record, I was like, you know, this is actually a really stupidly fun song. And and we just, you know, we recorded it and it sounded great. So we, but that's what it's about. It's about some guy who wanted, wanted me to write a song about him and how awesome he was. Hot numbers on the telephone. That's a great fucking hook, man. It's so catchy. I, I'm singing at work all the time. There isn't actually like a real per se telephone anymore, though. Like, was that a? Um, you know, I don't. I, I just heard the music and somehow, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's. It doesn't sound anything like the hanging on the telephone by Blondie, but I think that was in my head when I heard it, and I was just like, I'm gonna get, I gotta write the song about numbers on a telephone and uh, you know, breathing heavy and hot, and you know, I, I took patches of the lyrics that I had laying around about something like the Precambrian times where a hoot. You know, it has nothing to do with telephones, but, uh, you know, it's just, I, I threw some lyrics together. It's vaguely about talking dirty on the telephone. You dial some hot numbers, good things happen. <laughs> now, this next song, it makes me think, because I'm, I'm, let me ask you, Dick, was this album, was a lot of this album recorded, like, during the pandemic? Because it does seem like there's some nods to the pandemic in it, like the next song, Panic, Panic. Was that, like, a nod to COVID and all the living with... So, no, here's the thing. Uh, we actually, we tracked in January 2020, before, before anyone knew what was going on, we tracked units of time and panic panic so we had panic panic and it wasn't about covid but we had like this song kind of ready to go when covid happened we're like yeah panic panic you know <laughs> so we had like in april we we're like we're dropping this new single and you know it's really relevant to what's going on but yeah panic panic was just like i don't know what it was about but again it's just some lyrics and um yeah i think i was uh, in an old band in high school and somebody my friend had a song called monsters don't panic and that was in my head for a long time so i, I decided i want to write a song of panic but it was it was good timing to have that song ready to go uh, once March and April rolled around. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Uh, title track, Turquoise. So fucking catchy, dude. Like, I think when I hear it, I've heard that, like, Turquoise, like, you know, in the old days would ward off, like, evil and spirits and stuff. Am I close? Yeah, I mean, Turquoise is definitely about the pandemic. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's very, you know, if you listen to the lyrics, it's very calculated. It's about that. The, the nod to Turquoise is uh, there's... A kind of famous English conspiracy theorist named David Icke, who um, you know believes you know I believe the whole like world is controlled by reptiles and Rothschilds and all that. You can believe that. It's fine with me if you believe reptilians. that. Reptilians, reptilians, yeah. Yep. And so he uh, he he was like a, a beloved soccer commentator in England for a long time. He just that's what he did, you know. And then when he disappeared, came back six months later. And he's wearing all this turquoise and says he's the son of God and that he has to protect the world from reptiles. And uh, and so that was that was I always thought that was funny. Like he just starts wearing all this turquoise <laughs> to protect himself. And so uh, when I wanted to write a song about the pandemic, uh, you know, that, that was kind of the direction I went with it. What can you tell me about skyrocketing? That's the one that I can't even peg at all. Like I'm, I'm it's just so me, me me and the White Wolf are are avid day traders. He got me into day trading. You know, like and it's just it, it sounds silly, but like when you're in the van, like with, you know, on an eight hour drive, um, I like to buy and sell 
stocks, and he got me into that. And so skyrocketing is this all, it is kind of you know all time highs, all time lows, you know, a, you know metaphor for love in the stock market, and you know corporations and buyouts and mergers and acquisitions. You know, like love is a merger and acquisition kind of thing. It's just it's it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, last time I talked to you, the song Born to be Ridiculed, you had told me it was going to be the name of the album. Why did that change? And what's that song about? Uh, born to be Ridiculed? I, I just, it, you know, just, you're, you're, born, you're, you're born to be ridiculed. Uh, you, you know, uh, you're voted most likely to be ridiculed in high school kind of thing. And it's just an anthem. You know, it sounds like a Elvis Presley song kind of, you know, <laughs> born to be ridiculed. Uh, See, but, I can't picture you being picked on in high school. Like, I always thought you'd be, like, the cool dude. Like, I got <laughs> dude, my, I, I was completely tormented in fucking high right, school. Right, yeah, so. I mean, that's that's how you get into rock and roll. And like, you know, you know like, you're know, you tired of it. And, you know, you, you you pick up a guitar and you say, you know what, I'm cool. But that didn't happen until after high school. So I, I was ridiculed. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's, it's just kind of an anthem. Uh, um, you know, you're born to be ridiculed. You deal with it. You go through life. And, um, you know, you're born to be ridiculed. So you join the, the Air Force and the Marines. So you overcompensate later in life. Mm. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was going to be the name of the album, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. Next up, Child of Hunger. I, and you know what? This album, you know what I love so much about this album? Every, like, genre, it's all over the place. Every genre is represented, and it all fucking goes together and comes together and works perfectly. Like, it's... Yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of bands try to do that, and it doesn't work, but it, everything locks together like a puzzle, and it just flows perfectly. Child of Hunger... What do you what do you think? Uh, it's, just, it's it's loosely just kind of like um, you know it's like a it's a stoner stoner metal kind of you're singing about this uh, about a famine and how it affects the children and you know uh, take my hand we can you know we can grow we can repopulate the world and grow more plants and stuff and it's it's just so stupid it's like you know the um, you know the 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 famine hit the money men in their pockets, but it hit the children hardest. hardest. And, the, and the next thing you know, the, the, the debris from the spacecraft. <laughs> I was, when I sing that every night, I'm just like, what the, all of a sudden now there's a spacecraft. Like, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it was more to get like a song like that on the album. The, the next one is really interesting to me. And it's just like a fun kind of, is it, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, is this probably go back to the LA scene again? The Staten Island S squad. How does one come up with Staten Island Asquad? Is there really a Staten Island Asquad? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, a long time ago, I was starting to write it, but it was more of like almost like a, um, I don't even know the genre, but it was just like, you and me and her, we're the Staten Island Asquad, Staten Island Asquad, you know, like, uh, kind of like almost like a Janet Jackson kind of thing. So I had, this, I had the concept of Staten and then I wanted to do a side project and call ourselves the Staten Island Asquad. <laughs> and then uh, this really poppy, Riff came along, and I just, I, I, you know, I, I, I had wanted to do this song now for the last like ten albums. I, you know, this has been going back maybe to like Kill or Zodiac. Oh wow! You know, like, and so I finally got it out there. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's only a couple left here. Uh, Windows of Time, I think, might be one of my favorites in the whole album, only because like when I listen to the song, I have, I, I could picture. It's funny. I actually picture you like falling through time. <laughs> so it's kind of an, it's kind of an awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's it's kind of like a it's 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 not like it's not like a major window of time. It's like fall through a hole, go from from the middle of the day to the middle, middle of the night, like twelve hours. You know? <laughs> and then there's the red door and the blue door. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah, you're right. yeah, like yeah, red door. Yeah, yeah, red door. But the, the interesting thing about window of time is, and it's the only song we've ever recorded that way, where I just I, I told Nash to like just give me like 120 beats per minute beat, basic beat, and I'll just sing to it. And there was no music, so I sang all the lyrics that you hear to no music, um, and then he built the music around that. So it was, it was kind of just like a, a challenge to him. It's like, here's what I'm singing. Now go. And, and that's what he did. And then it transitions nicely in the units of time, yep. which I must feel is like, is it almost kind of like a rockabilly slash country kind of tune? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at like Bruce Springsteen, Grant Parsons, kind of that idea. And it's, I, I, I was, you know, I was at a playground with my daughter and somehow the lyrics just came to me. He's like, I keep holding on, holding on to time. You know, you just look at it. And uh, it just it just kind of wrote itself from there. But yeah, I just, I, I picture the I picture the singer as, as like a, a Grand Parsons character, like in a denim jumpsuit with a giant, you know, bejeweled crucifix on his back, and just like you know, <laughs> hey, <man."> <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, just pure Americana. What what inspired you to do Five Clowns? Like, expect I, I tell you what, the one lyric that's the most disturbing to me is the one with there's five there's one clown. With gashes in his yeah. legs. Yeah. Like, was you just laying around watching, like, like some horror movie comes on and they're, uh... 
I mean, this this is a complete nonsense song. It's uh, it's you know, there's five clowns. Apparently, I'm one of the five clowns. Yeah, you, know, you talk about the other four. Where does that leave me? So uh, you know, and the world was good to me because I got to be one of the five clowns. But who, who, what they represent, I have no fucking idea. When you come up with this though, like, is this is this something you just sit down and it organically just pops in your head? And you got to hurry up and write it down, or is this the, these things that you got to flush out for a long time and work on for a very long time? time. I, mean, I mean, I can I, I I can show you a little bit. Of, so it's like I have this this you know just a basic iphone uh, notepad and like you know there you go it's just like pages and pages and pages oh of, wow of you know like and so yeah like these are from like a couple of my solo albums um which i have yeah so yeah that's all here and it just goes on and on so if i'm in the car and like i just try and piece things together and uh yeah that's how that works wow that's i've always wanted to ask you i never got to last time uh, yeah I, just, I come up with phrases as, as i walk around like walk to the south side tonight and uh you know come up with a couple ideas and then they're in there now and uh, you know, assuming my my phone doesn't crash, I mean, I do back it up. Um, yeah, then uh, I'll have a song eventually. The Browning of Her Bones. I don't know what's about. Uh, I, I just. I, I, it's I, not personal <laughs> to any particular person, you know. No, I. I it I, almost I, sounds like you had an ex and like it didn't work out, and then now you're kind of like you know bitter. Like that's what I get. You know, I I, I think it, I started it as kind of like a guy that my voice is kind of song. I, I almost huh. I almost sound like Robert Paul and like the. Browning of her bones, you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, rotary dial tones. Uh, uh, but then uh, when I heard it, I, I told John, I was like, you know, this that, that, that song by Phoenix that's in all the car commercials, I was like, that's how it should sound. And so he did a really good job of like, of like you know, making it sound like that Phoenix song. So, oh. yeah. Well, last but not least is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the wheel, or what do you call it? The wheel finds a way. The wheel finds a way. Yeah. And it's, it's very kind of disco y. It's got a great hook. Was it supposed to be kind of disco y? I, you know, I, I, the wheel, wheel finds. I, I was writing it. Um, it was, it was going to be an up-tempo rock song. I, I had the chorus ready to go, and then Tate plopped this music on me, and I just, yeah, I just was like, well, I've got this thing about wheel finds the way. Threw it in there. It seemed to work. So, um, yeah, I don't know what it's about at all. I just, uh, again, <laughs> so, some lyrics that have been pieced together. There's a reference to a quasar in there. I've no, I don't even know what a quasar is. I think it's loosely, loosely something in outer space. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got two more questions for you, so I'm sure. not going to hold you all night. Yeah. I can't wait for the show tonight. Get to hear some new turquoise stuff live. Can't wait. Always a great time. Anytime you can see Electric Six in your town, you have to check them out because if you don't, you're doing yourself a big disservice, Cats. I wanted to ask you, sir. I heard a rumor that uh, they're going to re-release Fire on Vinyl again. Is there any truth to that? That's entirely true. It's coming out next year. I, I think they wanted to have it out for the, the 20th anniversary of this year, but um, it, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, vinyl pressing is like... Everything is like eight months behind, I guess. I, that's that's my take on why it's coming out next year, but it will come out next year. The biggest question that's been on my mind, and it's a buzz all through the Electric Six groups. You had been on, you was on a podcast, and you made mention this very well might be Electric Six's last album. Is I mean, there any truth to that? It, it, it absolutely could be. We don't want it to be, but uh, you know, you'll see tonight that two of our main members aren't with us tonight because they have kids, and I have kids, and uh, it's just it's harder and harder to tour and to keep this going. Um, and you know, the days of us doing an album a year, which we did for a long time are, are definitely done. And you know, it's, it's mo mostly because of kids also COVID kind of set us back a bit, but we just don't have that kind of time. Uh, that said, I mean, it was five years between the last two albums. So, you know, maybe a couple years from now we can start working on the next one. It's just, you know, um, right now I think the focus for all of us is, is just getting our kids to school in the morning. And then, uh, you know, the, you know, and the other thing about having as many albums as we do is Eventually, you sit back and you say, "You know, we've, we've proved our fucking point." <laughs> so, I hope I hope we do another one. Uh, you know, I'm actually gonna see Nash in Detroit, and we're gonna start talking about it. Um, I mean, that said, I mean, I, I've been doing solo albums. I haven't. I've, I've already got the next one in the can, so that's done. So, so you'll continue to do solo albums, regardless. I will, I will always do solo albums. I mean, I, oh. I, I have a great, I'm a, I have a great situation in, in in Brooklyn where I live. A great producer, a great studio that I have access to. Um, so I will always do that. I'll, I'll always do music. Um, and I, I don't think this is the last Electric Six record, but if it is, it, it, it feels like a good one to go out, out on, but it's not for, it's not for like, we can't take this anymore. It's just, it, is this something we can do? And, uh, and you know, again, 15 albums, there's, there's no shame in walking away after that, but we don't want to. I don't want to live in a world where there's no more Electric Six, yeah. just saying, but yeah. if you can check out Dick Valentine's so well. Uh, this is hell. Oh, this is hell. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It came out. Yeah, it came out this year, 2023, and I've got a new one ready to go for 2024. Well, there you have it, cats. Make sure you check out Electric Six when they come to town. The man, the myth, the motherfucking legend, Dick Valentine, my buddy. Peace and love. Peace and love. Check him out. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much.